Hello everyone, it is I, Croc Hunter 99, and today is all about the Atlantic Stingray. I welcome you back to the Reptile Planet. Alright, the Atlantic Stingray. Now, this is a very, um, basically the smallest species of stingray, mainly inhabiting the western side of the Atlantic Ocean. They can be found throughout basically the east coast, between Delaware all the way down to Florida. Basically in having estuaries, lagoons, even in some places in Florida where they can have it, um, freshwater areas, and they can also tolerate low salinity areas. So they can get a little bit more diverse in other stingray species. Now Atlantic stingrays can get up to around two feet long, which around from head nose to his tail, and they can get around 14 inches in diameter, which is about like a half a foot. So yeah, they're more like disc-like, unlike um, unlike their relatively cousins, the sharks. They're much more of a flat shark, but with a different type of weapon. We'll get into that later on. So Atlantic, Atlantic stingrays can have a kind of like a brown or yellow brown coloration to them on their dorsal on their dorsal side, but it acts as good camouflage when they're buried in the sand, especially in murky water, have some high potential threats. Now. Atlantic stingrays do have a varied diet. They'll eat marine worms. They'll eat small fishes, um, but they're but they'll also eat crustaceans such as shrimp and crabs. Now their jaws, instead of tearing their prey apart like sharks do, stingrays can basically use their jaws are strong to crush the hard shells of crabs. That way, they help them basically ingest them a lot easier, as well as crushing like um, basically be kind of like a mo like kind of like, uh, dismembering like fish, uh, shrimp. But they do have very powerful jaw, jaws, not really made for like crushing like um, human limbs, like or tearing them apart, but more like for crushing their prey to get to make them a lot more easier to, to ingest. Now, Atlantic stingrays in the breeding season, females will have up to around one to four pups at a time. So they don't have many offspring like many stingrays do, but like this does have a substantial amount. But like many animals, only one percent does wind up surviving to adulthood. So once the babies are basically born, they're already armed with, with a venomous barb and, and very capable of defending themselves. Now that's where the dangerous part comes in. In many stingrays, there are, are a venomous fish that do need to be um, taken into mind for, especially when trying to handle one. Now you guys voted for me to basically capture and photograph an Atlantic stingray. Now I accept the challenge. But it's good for me to explain exactly what I'm going to get myself into once I go on this mission. Now, Atlantic Stingrays, I, so you guys probably seen either by my second channel or like on my social media, I have encountered these Stingrays before. I have basically came out of that situation unscathed. But for kind of like for context, I'll basically go in deep, kind of go into a little bit of detail of what I'll be expecting. Also, the safety measures that I got to take before before um, basically like try to capture a stingray and make sure I put that plan into action when I actually get my hands on one. Now, Atlantic stingrays do have a venomous bar at the base of their tail that basically use their self-defense against predators, especially while they're getting stepped on, they basically use basically with their tail around to basically jab that barb into their attackers. Especially for humans, it winds up being in the leg or the foot, which can be very painful, but the venom does wind up causing a little more effects than normal. So a lot of times it can cause pain, it can cause swelling, but a lot of other symptoms it can cause blistering, especially with blood in it. There's also a lot more serious effects to it. It can cause vomiting, nausea, fatigue, as well as even more serious issues like respiratory distress, and basically a lot more complicated problems that can go, that definitely need to be treated right away if you do want to get stung by Atlantic Stingray. Yeah, so these symptoms can be very serious if left untreated. So basically, if you want to get stung by Stingray, it's best to find medical treatment immediately and as fast as you can. So that's basically the danger I'm going to be putting myself in, so i got to make sure that I have a proper plan in place, that way this won't happen to me. And trust me, it will, it's not going to happen to me because I'm going to make sure that I am basically cautious and make sure that I do, do this plan by the book. So the idea is that there are two, two like, um, holes behind the Stingray's eyes that I can basically get my hands into make it a lot more easier to handle, but the tail is going to be another problem because if I do not secure the tail, it can whip around and I'm going to want to get stung in the arm or potentially, if it misses, I might want to get one in my knee or my leg, so I got to make sure that I have the um, front side secured. Also, I'll have a pair of 
uh, basically put fishing pliers to help me secure the barb. That way the stingray will be able to whip his tail around to sting me. So basically that will be the safest way I can handle a stingray. Also I got to make sure you get the hook out so I got to basically like secure the barb first. That way I can basically be out of his way from the stinger. So I can get the hook out safely as well as handle the stingray without fear of getting stung. Now releasing it, releasing it, they got to practically release the front end first, then the tail end, the second it starts to swim off, and get out of the way as fast as I possibly can. Now these are kind of the plans that I have in place, that way I won't suffer a sting from a Lennox Stingray, because basically, as you guys know, I, I do play it safe a lot of animals, but I have come across the dangerous animals before, such so as Stingrays and Sharks, so I have done that before, I do make sure that everything is not going to go wrong, make sure it's secure certain areas that way they can look around me I can't I don't get sting stung or bit so I gotta make sure that I put this plan in action when I actually go out there and basically find the Atlantic sting rate in person. Now I have caught two of these guys before during my time in Georgia so basically handle a lot more safely I just have to repeat that process again to to basically not ensure my safety but also the fish's safety to make sure I don't hurt it in any kind of way that causes it to be a lot more you know like um rowdy and if it slips out of my hands i'm gonna be really in trouble so i gotta make sure i have this plan in place so yeah so that's the plan for the atlantic stingray when i'm about to get one and hopefully i do want you guys to wish me luck and make sure i come back yeah that, that's a, basically a problem i am going to come back and basically you guys are going to get to see firsthand of me catching these basic saltwater fish in the flesh so yeah that's the atlantic stingray and hopefully all goes well when i complete my mission for you guys and also, I get to have another fish, you know, captured for you guys up close. Another fish off my list for the summer. For the summer. <laughs> so, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If any questions for me, post them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our content. If you have not voted for one animal you want me to see next, go do that now before I set out. And I will see you all on the next one. This is one adventure you definitely don't want to miss. Alright, I will see you all later. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe to more content, follow me on social media, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!